What's the creepiest, weirdest, or most supernaturally frightening thing to happen in history? The Sea Peoples, and their destruction of every major civilization along the Eastern Mediterranean during the Late Bronze Age. Nobody is quite sure where they came from, or if they migrated to the areas they conquered or not. All the historical records we have on them are sparse. The Egyptians are the source of most of our knowledge on the invasions. Some historians theorize that the reason for the later end of the Bronze Age in Europe is because of them. Here in Argentina, in 1989, was a case of two girls that were found nude and dead in a bathtub. The autopsy showed up that they were dead for at least two months. But, many people claimed to have seen the girls alive just two days before. One of the girls was at a hospital because she had a fever. None of the girls had taken the medicine that the doctor gave for the fever. They were not suffocated, nor intoxicated by carbon monoxide, nor electrocuted. Fast forward 4 months, a judge decides to came back to the case. The investigation came back and found that the bathtub, that was emptied and infectated, incubated again lots of cadaveric fauna and was filled with water. They had theories about this, nothing confirmed. Fast forward a year, an investigator came with an hypothesis. The girls were injected right at the heart with poison from a black mamba, which accelerate the decomposition proxies. But we are in Argentina. Where in the heck can you get a black mamba in Argentina? It came out that the oldest brother of one of the victims had a reptile house with two mambas. The judge ordered that he had to be captured. But they never found him. And he's still a fugitive to this day. They then went to the morgue to investigate the hearts of the girls, whose bodies were freezed for the investigation. To confirm the poison hypothesis. And this is the final touch. All of a sudden. The hearts disappeared. They could never find them. This is to this day one of the most interesting mysteries in our country. I think the creepiest thing I have read about so far is the civil war in Liberia. It involved large amounts of child soldiers who were taken from their families. Drugged and convinced forced to do war atrocities. So basically during this war there were roving gangs of drugged up youths who would perform human sacrifices and eat people. Apparently they also cross dressed or wore outrageous outfits thinking they would be protected by them. Vice interviewed a warlord from that time General Bus Naked. Yes that was his name. You can tell this guy is a psychopath because of how friendly and slick he is. Just to imagine that he ate the hearts of 14 years old children before battle sends chills down my spine. Rasputin, he just would not die, until he died, but still it took way more doing than should be humanly possible. Okay, so apparently, according to a whole mess of people down below here, Rasputin died from a single gunshot to the head. The stories were made up to make him into a monster or something. There are unconfirmed reports though, that he may well have been Russia's greatest love machine. More on that later. He would not die, until he was killed to death. Assuming it actually happened, there's the story of the ship Ellen Austin. In 1881 while sailing from the UK to St. John's, NB, they encountered an abandoned schooner in the middle of the Atlantic, in good shape but registry, identity, and whereabouts of the crew unknown. The Ellen Austin's captain decided to claim it and put a prize crew on board. Then the two ships continued on towards NB. Not long afterward they encountered heavy fog and were separated. A day or so later the fog lifted and the Ellen Austin spotted the schooner, unmanned again, with no clue about the prize crew's fate. Needless to say nobody else wanted to form a second prize crew and the Ellen Austin left the schooner behind them. It was never seen again. Maybe the crew of the schooner was in some hidden compartment and killed the other crew for their belongings. The teleporting of Gil Perez, on the 24th of October. 1593, Gil Perez was doing his guard duties at the governor's palace in Manila. Chinese pirates had assassinated the governor, Gomez Perez das Marinas, the night before, but the guards still guarded the palace and awaited the appointment of a new governor. Tired, Gil Perez decided to lean against a wall and rest for a moment. When he opened his eyes, he was in a completely unfamiliar place, unsure how to react. He continued to do his guard duties until he was approached by someone who started asking him questions and telling him that he was somewhere that it was impossible for him to be. Gil was in Mexico City's Plaza Mayor. When questioned, Gil Perez gave the story of his supposed teleportation and the death of his country's governor. 
The assassination was unknown to those in Mexico City, but Gil Perez was reportedly wearing the uniform of the palace guards in Manila. He was placed in jail because it was thought he might be a deserter and or a servant of the devil. After two months, a ship arrived from the Philippines, bringing news of the governor's death. They said that they knew Gil Perez, though they did not know he was in Mexico City. The last time they had seen him was on the 23rd of October at the palace. The authorities in Mexico City decided to release Gil Perez and send him home. As there is no other account of Gil materializing anywhere, it is assumed that he never spontaneously teleported again. It was lucky for him that, if the story is true, he did not wind up in a country where Spanish was not spoken or worse, in a harsh terrain like the ocean, desert or arctic tundra. Some sources say that the story was not told until 100 years after it reportedly occurred. Other sources say that authorities documented the occurrence immediately. Without details like this, it is hard to say if the story is any more suspicious than its science fiction premise already suggests. I'm extremely frightened of Kittim Cave, the birthplace of Marburg virus and possibly Ebola Zaire. I don't know why. I read the hot zone when the Ebola epidemic in Liberia was starting to get out of control in the way the book talks about that cave and that family of viruses. It's kind of horrifying. As far as man-made events go, Mao's cultural revolution, basically, turning a nation of 1 billion people into a giant pseudo-religious cult, deserves more attention. One time meat spontaneously rained from the sky in Kentucky. They estimated that it was a mixture of horse meat and human infant meat. Best part? Three people or something like that decided to eat IT. Oh, here's some random sky meat. I think I'll make a burger. The theories on what caused it were ridiculous. At one point they believed it to be cosmic meat as in it was meat that existed in space and fell to our planet. I wrote about 200 lines of code including some functions and new calling protocols. It compiled the first time, it ran in all scenarios with no errors, so I checked it into the repository and was done. One and done, and will never happen again. Lars of Reddit, what's the best bulls you can convince us of? The disappearance of Glenn Miller. He boarded a US Army plane headed from England to France in 1944, and we never heard from again. Nobody knows what happened, and they still have not found any evidence of his plane. It would be like Taylor Swift just suddenly vanishing. I think two things. First, the Villasca Axe murders in Villasca, Iowa back in June 1912, a family of six, four children ages 5-11, as well as two of the children's friends were sleeping over, ages 8 and 12, were all sleeping on June 9th-10th when they were hacked to death by an axe in their sleep. Lack of evidence seems that they were killed by someone, who was never found. Currently the house is reported to be haunted by the family and the friends as well as the killer. I'd check it out if you ever could. Second, Pedro Alonso Lopez. This man is 66 years old and between 1969 and 1980, he was reported to have killed between 110 300 plus girls. In 1983 he was found guilty of murdering 110 young girls in Ecuador alone and confessed to a further 240 murders of missing girls in neighboring Peru and Colombia. However, the maximum prison sentence for murder in Ecuador is 16 years but he was released after 14 years for good behavior I think and then he was committed to a mental hospital where he spent 3 years there. In 1998, he was released. In 2002. He was wanted for murder but hasn't been found. He could be anywhere in the world including the place you live in. He could be even be you. Does anyone remember in like 2008 when that robot designed to look like Philip K. Dong was being shipped and just disappeared what happened with that? I've always found the door to hack in Turkmenistan freaky as freak. Soviet engineers discovered it in 1971 thought it was a substantial oil field, so they set up camps and such, then the ground collapsed into a giant crater. Fearing further release of poisonous gases they set it ablaze figuring it'd burn out quickly. The hole still burns to this day. N Wikipedia org wiki door to hell. Maybe the eruption of terror. Volcanoes are bad enough today, but back then people had no clue what they were and even less ability to get away. Having a mountain in the middle of your island exploding must have been heck on earth. 
Then you have the poor people or Crete and further south in Egypt that were hit with the massive tsunami, and still no one had the slightest idea what happened. After millions of years of gene matching and evolution, after humanity built a civilization through thousands of years of struggle, after advanced network technology had become widespread across the globe, you came into existence and sent a message from possibly across the globe to ask me a question. Personally, I think that is weird and creepy beyond all comprehension. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.